So if we look now at um, getting even further back, um, the parish records, by parish we mean the Church of England, parish registers of the baptism, marriages and burials. So here we are, look, I've taken you back at a stroke into Tudor times. So these were introduced under Henry VIII in uh, 1538, and they were recording the baptisms, marriages and burials um, of the, the new faith. So the introduction of, of the Church of England. So, of course, there had to be a way of making sure that uh, people were not just ignoring it and just carrying on in the old ways. So in 1597, uh, his daughter, Elizabeth I, there she is on the right, looking very regal, um, made it compulsory to keep the records in books. Um, before then, you could uh, you had to keep them and they were inspected, but you could write them on anything you liked um, and chuck them away. And of course, many, um, many places did. Um, so she said that they had to be kept in uh, proper parchment books and that the earlier records uh, had to be copied out. Um, well, she said they had to be copied out from earliest times or if you really, really can't face it, from at least 1558, which was the start of her reign. So that's when uh, many of the old uh, records begin. But you're very, very lucky if you can get back as, as far as the 16th century. Um, but if you have a look at them, um, and again, a lot of these are online as well, uh, you'll find that it's in the same um, handwriting and very consistently year after year. So it's not uh, a vicar um, or a parish clerk who lived to be 115. Um, it's uh, the fact that they were all done at the same time. So if we look now at Annie, we've just seen her on the 1939 register. Um, and she's born Annie Mary Gamble in about 1873. You could verify that by getting her birth certificate. Um, but we know from her marriage certificate she's aged 31 in 1904. And her dad is Thomas William Gamble. So I've put another lovely map there. Um, and there is the page with her baptism on her Lowesby with Cold Newton. So again, you probably can't read that. So here she is, um, Annie Mary Gamble. Um, and look, there's another entry, presumably her, her brother. Um, same parents' names, Thomas and Maria. Um, so undoubtedly the same family, the same same date. Why would um, why would they do that, Robin? I, I, well, I suppose it's family convenience and economy, really. You know, if you're taking a day off, you might as well get all your children done at the same time. You've got the parson there, you've got every, all the relatives there. If you're having relatives, it's just more efficient, isn't it? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You're right to mention there was a um, there was a cost to entry into the register. So it might have saved saved a few pence. Mm. You, you do find them sometimes, don't you, with a, a number of children? Yeah, you could, yes, you get a whole family sometimes done, and it, it can skew, really, if you're going on baptism. It can skew your, your perception of how old people actually are. Um, but it might well be that you've got a whole family of six children being done at the same time. You know, yeah. and the oldest is about 10 years old and the youngest six months. So sometimes that was because um, they... The, the vicar had done a bit of a, a drive to get people baptised, went went calling house to house, and people said, "Oh yes, yes, good good point, we will." Um, or people of different uh, might be nonconformist rather than Church of England mm. have been persuaded. Um, so the other possibility is that they're twins, but how would we find out whether they're twins or not? Well. You've been paying attention, haven't you, everybody? Um, we would look at the birth, marriage and death indexes and see if they have the same registration, wouldn't we? Um, I've done that and they haven't. So we know that um, Annie's parents are called Thomas and Maria. And then from that, we can have a look um, at their marriage. Um, or to see if Thomas Thomas Gamble married a Maria 
something um, at about the right date. And I found this, the bands of marriage between Thomas William Gamble and Maria Newitt in 1868 in uh, in Cold Newton Parish. So everything tallies. Um, so it's pretty much undoubtedly the, the right couple. And we can see um, she's from uh, Long Buckby in Northamptonshire. As uh, some people are, aren't they, from Northamptonshire? Uh, yeah, they're very fortunate people uh, from Northamptonshire. Yes, yes, certainly. Very special people, I always think, as someone from Northamptonshire, you understand. Yes. <laughs> Lovely. So yeah, she's um, she's consented to marry a Leicestershire chap, and uh, here they are. So the do bands think, were. Do, do you so, think this is a railway connection? Long Buckby. Long Buckby has a station. Cole Newton has a station. I wonder, you know, is is this uh, railway employee moving about? Oh, it's an interesting thought. It could could be, couldn't it? Yes. Yeah. Um, easily, because sometimes you do think, how how could they possibly have met if they've lived a long way away? Yes, so, yes, yes, be. that's right. But I wonder if this is, you know, this is the the uh, you know mid Victorian railway boom, and they're benefiting from the cheaper travel and things like that. It's just interesting speculation, really. Nothing more than that. Yeah. Yes. Um, so, do you want to explain what bands are? By all means, yes, it's it's a protection, really. It came in in 1753 into effect the following year. It's really to prevent uh, clandestine marriages, you know, people running off to Gretna Green or something with a with an heiress. And it means you have to have your uh, bans read uh, three successive Sundays saying that these two people intend to get married. And um, if no one objects, they can be married. Uh, it, ha it still happens with civil registration, doesn't it? You have to give notification. It's published. And so people can object. Um, the odd thing is that it's a very useful record sometimes because um, sometimes the marriage doesn't take place, but you've still got the ma the banners uh, record. Uh, and also it gives you two cracks at the same marriage because you have to have the bans read in the home parishes of each party getting married. So if they come from different places, you've got, you know, you have one in Long Buckby, presumably in Northamptonshire, there will be a a, a similar bands record in the marriage register. Yeah, yeah. They don't always survive, of course, but whether they do, they can be useful. Right. So there's um, the map of uh, Cold Newton for you. You can see it's a tiny little place. Um, they're, they're lovely these this is the 25 inch map it's really a plan isn't it that you know everything on it is there if it says there's a tree there it's because there really is a tree there so it's uh, you know it's not a stylized map it's a plan they're yeah. absolutely gorgeous i think yes yeah you can see you can tell we're fans of maps can't you <laughs> every <laughs> every pump or well is marked it, 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 every, you know, it's lovely yes aren't yes, they? yes yeah yeah So then having uh, parents' names, you can uh, go even further back. So you can, let's look at the baptism of Thomas William Gamble. Um, so we said it was Lowesby with Cold Newton. Um, and having had a look at Cold Newton, you can see that uh, why these two little places are linked. Um, and there, there it is. Um, so he's the son of William and Anne Gamble, um, baptised uh, February 1850. So we're getting further and further back um, in time, just using the parish registers. And then um, who's his father? Well, um, William Gamble, same parish. And here we are. 1816. So hopefully you can see how you might um, continue your search. But it's really important um, to make sure that all the dates tally and that they all um, make sense. And you may find um, that you've got more than one possibility, that cousins often have the same names and, and um, that you've got um, some other possibilities um, if it's a very common name as well. So if you're getting confused with all the Williams and Thomases and Anns, 
um, this is why you, you need your um, your chart to make sure that you're plotting them correctly. Um, and now I've put linking sources here. Um, so the Cold Newton census of 1851 should be able to confirm that you're on the right track. Um, and there you can see, I think. Um, yes, down the bottom. There they are. Down the bottom. Yes. Yes. So we've got the burial of um, William Gamble um, again in Lowesby in 1885. So there he is. This is a nicely written one, isn't it? Yes. Not quite as nice as your handwriting. <laughs> I'm not sure about that. But the, the, the thing I've been noticing all along is that so far all the handwriting has been perfectly readable. It's, you know, sometimes slightly unfamiliar, but it's all perfectly readable. There's no need to be afraid of um, old handwriting so far anyway. Yeah, it's a question of um, looking at it and what we say is getting your eye in, don't we? Yes, yes, yes. So even if it looks difficult to start with, um, you can, well, you can sometimes have help. Sometimes it's transcribed. Ask your archivist. Um, or you'll just find that it starts to make sense after a while. And uh, but this is particularly nice, I think. Um, so if you subtract 68 from um, 1885, you'll find somebody of the right uh, age to have been born in 1816. It's the right parish, so it's not sort of two counties away. Um, not that that's impossible, but all this indicates you have to have the correct person. So let's look at what finally happened to Annie. And here is her death certificate um, in February 1944. Do you want to say a bit about this one, Robin? Uh, by all means, yes. Uh, um, you, you, it's a typical uh, death certificate that you've got the person um, reporting it and so on, and you've got the name of the, the deceased, their age, where they died and so on. But also you get the cause of death, which can be quite interesting sometimes. And in this case, myocarditis, which I think yeah, that's a sort of heart problem, isn't it? Heart tremors or yeah. something like that. And paralysis agitans, which is actually Parkinson's disease, I believe. Uh, and um, you know, from other researchers, as we'll see, that we 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 f did discover that Annie was known as a rather nervous sort of person. So we, maybe we see the beginning of of that sort of thing there: heart trouble and you know, tremor yeah. and so on. Yeah. But she died in Hillcrest in Swain Street. Now, what does Hillcrest mean to us? Well, it's um, the former workhouse. Yes, yes, yeah. I don't know whether she would have liked going into the workhouse or not. You know, it, 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 for a lot of old people, uh, you know, even under a camouflaged name, and I'm sure a far nicer regime, uh, I suspect it was still the workhouse and rather a sad place to end your days. Yeah, there was a uh, great fear of uh ending up in the workhouse as, as people said even um, after they many of them became uh, hospitals um even even when i was a child i remember uh, older people saying that i don't want to end up in the workhouse that's right that's right i think by that time was the general hospital and uh, yes yes but they still associated it with that yeah, the, so. the shadow of the workhouse there's a very long one isn't it uh, yes there's one other interesting thing, though, isn't there on here, and that's under rank or profession. They're still uh, after the status of the person, and her status or her rank or profession is she's a widow, and she's the widow of Alfred Burroughs, mental hospital attendant, which is very interesting, as we shall see. Uh, but also it's, it's rather curious because... Um, you know, uh, she, was she just a widow? I mean, are you just a widow? Did she not have an occupation? I suppose not. Um, so there she is, just widow of Alfred Burroughs, mental hospital attendant. Well, she was doing her unpaid domestic duties in that's 1939, true. wasn't she? Yes, yes, that's right. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. 
And her son, Frank, is the uh, informant, so the person registering the death. So he's the, yes, um, yeah. the little child. Um, he's in the the following the petticoat, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So how are we doing? Well, um, here's our tree. And there's Annie in um, the white square there and with all the things that we've found out. So as we say, if you're getting confused with all the Thomases and Williams and Anns, um, write them down because they tended to reuse names. Um, perhaps some of you are named for family members. Perhaps you, there's a family name that's used and used. Um, and then uh, you can have even the same name as your father or grandfather, um, which is can be really confusing, and you can find that you're in the wrong generation. Um, but it's, you, it's it's often very helpful when family you, families use mother's maiden name as a first name and things like that, don't they? Sometimes, and it can give you a clue as to, you know. Uh, the family descent you know if, if someone is called brownlow higgins you think where on earth did brownlow come from and then you you discover that the grandfather's name was henry brownlow um, yes yeah yeah so, my husband's middle name is his mother's maiden well, there you are there you are so so it persists to this very day as they say <laughs> 